Good morning. We welcome you this morning to Archbold United Methodist Church. I'm Susie and I am the music director here and I'm going to do the announcements this morning um, because Pastor Jason and the family are still having a wonderful time on their vacation in Texas and I, I, I've seen some pictures and I know they're having just a grand time so we're gonna pray for them to have safe travels and, and a wonderful vacation together. Um, I have a few announcements this morning, not too many. One in particular that's a very important announcement is that you, um, next Sunday is our consecration Sunday and we have the consecration brunch afterwards. And that requires you to RSVP just so that they have an idea and can plan the food accordingly. So I believe, um, according to what I was told, there should be RSVP cards inserted in your bulletins. Not if that's the truth, if you have them. Um, and <laughs> the, the brunch will follow worship next Sunday. And um, we know that we can't pay for the blessings that God gives each of us. And in that spirit, there is no charge for you to participate and come and eat and enjoy your brunch. Um, but however, it is important for us to get a count. So whether or not you're able to attend, you need to RSVP and fill out the card and please put it in the, um, the collection plates as they come around this morning or um, give it to an usher or give it to me or, or somehow get it turned in this morning because they need to have a final count. So if you can do that, that would be fantastic. And please come and enjoy a wonderful brunch next week. Um, for free. You can't beat that. You don't have to cook and you get to enjoy brunch. Um, also, we are asking that you spend some time, as we have been, praying for the new youth director who is somewhere out there just waiting for the call. And we are making the call each and every time that we pray. So um, there was a prayer that was put on, in your newsletter that we can, as a congregation, come together and pray. The suggestion was made that we try to pray each day at 445. So if you're available and you can take just a moment, that's really all it takes, to stop whatever you're doing and quiet yourselves and say the prayer that has been given to each of us, we are going to believe on the fact that God hears and is going to bring this person who he will call to come to our church and be our new youth director. Um, trunk or treat, it's getting to be that time of year. You're seeing the pumpkins out, you're seeing the decorations going up. And on October the 28th, we will be hosting at 5.30 a trunk or treat here. And Kendra has all the information on that. And she just needs you to let her know if you're gonna participate. So if you're gonna have your vehicle here and you're gonna decorate it up in some really cool, awesome way so that the kids can have fun and come, um, just let her know that so she kind of has an idea of exactly what we're going to have. That would be wonderful. Um, this week our youth group is still going on. So for the youth, um, please be here because Julie Brink and Liz Benz are going to be leading you this week in pastor's absence. So don't not show up. Make sure you're here for youth group because they want to have a wonderful time with you. Um, coming up at the end of the month, is something that I always look forward to and I think you do too and that's the men's pork roast and that's on October 31st and I think that's everything that I have everything else is in your newsletter and you can read it there and I'm going to ask Diane to come up and she's going to take us through our update on the attendance rally for this week yes well first of all I haven't been up here for a while Julie has done some good raising the cheers but I want to remind team one so do you remember hey team one Church is fun! Woo! All right! Team One, we've been doing a great job. Both teams have been doing an awesome job. Let's see what happened last week. Last week, it looked like Team Two had more people virtually, which was awesome. And Team One, you really showed up here in the pews. You helped pack the pews. We, we kind of nominated that. Um, total points because you also get more points if you're here, you fill out your card, um, those are the totals. And if we go to the next slide, you can see that total for the week, team one is ahead at 295, team two at 239. Total, team one, we are at 545, team two is at 499. 
again, <laughs> both teams are doing a great job. Pastor's really excited that it averages out to be over 100 per Sunday, and that's, that's the goal, is just to come and share and worship, so we're just having this little fun competition, but good job, everybody, keep it up. And we're going to say this prayer together. Jesus, Jesus empower, empower each of us to reach out to others so that they might worship you and enjoy the gospel. Be with us and remind us that while it's nice to have a fun competition, our back to church rally is about the serious work of building your kingdom. Amen. Let's all stand and sing together.
hands taller than me. <laughs> After a number of years of doing this, I think you've all come to expect that I'm going to stand up here and talk to you about this whole coming week that you prayerly consider what it is the Lord is calling you to give. <coughs> but I'm not going to do that right now. This morning, I'm going to talk about what happens to the dollars that you do give, that you do target. The budget, of course, as those categories we each have in our own home budgets apply here also. We have the extra things like apportionments, staff wages, pastor's salary, our week-to-week -week activities, and so on. Then there are the special giving opportunities we have through the Methodist denomination. There's UMCOR, which is the United Methodist Committee on Relief, the Student Fund, the Native American Fund, and I couldn't remember the other three. <clears throat> okay, so here are some of the mission projects that we support on an international, a national, and a local level. First of all, the Gideon, <coughs> and I have to say that because our resident Gideon, Skip, is here, and he's going to introduce in a little while our special speaker today, Brent Wensler, who is also a Gideon, and who was also my boss <coughs> for 32 years. <clears throat> okay, we have community meals, which Carlin and Doug Kraus take a big part in, and then all of you volunteer and help serve. We have the Henderson Settlement, Redbird Mission, Fairline, Friendship House. Now remember, these are all places that the money you give goes to. Hands of Grace, Reach Up, which is the CCNO Christian Ministry, Wings of the Morning, which is a medical airlift for people needing medical help in the Congo, Fulton County Christmas Cheer, the Blue Street Bags, Archbold Laundry Buddies, I'm not sure many of you have heard of that one, the Fish Food Pantry, Fulton County Red Cross, the Adult Mission Trips, and the Youth Camp Fees. The money we give allows us to continue to gather here at AUMC to worship our mighty God together and to love and to support one another. But that's not enough for me. I want to do more. My heart wants to do more. And God's word commands us to take care of those who are hurting, who are sick, the poor, the hungry. While we do have a structure of active committees within the church and a lot of volunteers help accomplish these things, I have also observed the last few years, and it really warms my heart to ponder on it, how many people, how many individuals here reach out without any recognition without any encouragement to do so, <clears throat> excuse me, other than their hearts saying, I want to do this, I want to help. But they reach out, they take people to medical appointments, they call on people, they check on one another, and that's what it's all about. We are not just a pocketbook church that throws money at problems and concerns. We are also willing to love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And that, of course, is John 13, 34, and 35. I am asking you to continue to pray. And as we pray our way to Consecration Sunday next week, may God show each of us what we can give as stewards of our finances, of our time, and of our talents. May God bless each of you, and may God hear your prayers. Thank you, Kathy. And he does hear our prayers. He'll hear our prayers this morning as we come together as a congregation and lift up things that are on our hearts. Um, I do have one that was given to me this morning by, by Peggy, and that is that Chris, her son Chris, um, his father-in-law, Glenn Jenkins, has gone home to the Lord, and that just happened overnight. So. We're going to remember Chris and, and his family and, and Glenn's family in our prayers this morning. And are there any other joys or concerns that anyone would like to 
put before the congregation this morning. We do have a few um, on our prayer request list, and, and these are in your bulletin. They're also in your newsletter. Um, Dale Quillett, we continue to pray for him as he is on hospice. Um, Jim Nicolin, with an infection that he is um, dealing with, and we continue to lift Jim in our prayers. Paula Suma is gonna be having a surgery this week. Um, we need to lift Jackie Wise's sister, Jody, who has, um, is dealing with stage four breast cancer. We, we lift her in our prayers. And also, um, our ongoing search for our staff, for a, a, a youth director. Um, it would be a wonderful thing if as a congregation, if we can continue to, to put our prayers together to make that become a reality for, for the youth in our congregation. That would be a wonderful thing. Uh, we're going to this morning, since pastor's not here, we're gonna pray together our prayer this morning and then we'll, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. We draw near to you, almighty God, united as brothers and sisters within your kingdom. Gathered together, we lift our eyes to see your face. Expectant with faith, we lay our lives before you. Lord, may your Holy Spirit transform us. May your light shine upon us and bring peace. We open our ears to hear your good news we open our eyes to see your truth, and we open our hearts to receive your endless love. In the name of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
And now if the kids would come forward and join me for the children's moment. about I bet I bet the sharp kids are watching today so if you're out there in virtual land hi to Landon Liam Layton Jack Carla and hello to all of you do you guys like to read books yeah. yeah you're not so much but you like them do your mom and dads read you books before bed yeah. how about well maybe not as you get older when you were younger did they I bet they did. I bet they did. Does your mom and dad read to you? Yeah, we loved that. I, I still love reading before bed. But we loved reading books to our boys before bed, and I think they loved it too. And they'd pick out a couple special ones. Some of the ones they liked. Did anybody ever read this one, Goodnight Moon? Yeah, you still have it? I know, probably parents out there remember it too. And you could look at it, you know, in good night room, and we would identify the kittens and the mittens. So that one was kind of fun. It was taught us, A, we liked it, and it kind of taught us a way to sort of say good night. Another one that my guys liked was this one because it, you could turn the pages. Would you help me? I'll let you help me, McKenna. One yellow, and then you open, you open this little thing. Open that, or this little one yellow and it opens up like that lion see and then you go two white open that flip swans Hi. isn't that fun and so you know they love turning the pages and it taught them about colors and and animals and numbers how about this one anybody read the very hungry caterpillar. Yes. What happens to that worm when he eats and eats and eats, and then he turns into a cocoon, and then what happens? He turns into a big butterfly. That's right, he turns into a butterfly. And so I love the pictures and the colors, and it teaches us about the lifestyle of a worm, right? Turns into a butterfly. A, that's right, caterpillar, you're right, caterpillar. And one of my boys' favorite books, and it even was kind of a favorite book of my husband's, The Big Book of Things That Go. Oh my word, we could look at this and it had all kinds of pictures of, of trucks and boats and airplanes and ships. And they could read that and learn about all kinds of different things that go. <coughs> So that was very, that was a fun one. So books are great. They're fun. They teach us about things. But one book that's the best book of all, the Bible. You are right. I knew you would get it. The Bible, because that book has been around for thousands and thousands of years. And, you know, this is kind of the one we do down in Route 2G, because it maybe has for the younger kids. It has pictures, it makes the stories a little easier, and as you get older, you get your very own Bible. And this is filled with stories about how we should live, how God wants us to live, and how Jesus came to save us, right? So it's wonderful to read all of our fun, fun books, and we can't forget to read the Bible, too. You're going to be hearing from Brent Winsler. He's going to talk about the Gideons. They help provide Bibles to people who don't have them. You guys probably have them in your house. There's a lot of people who don't ever have access to that. So that's wonderful that they can help provide the Bible, which is the best book of all. OK, let's say a little prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for all the books and things that we learn, but especially thank you for giving us the Bible 
that teaches us how you want us to live and treat others. In your name we pray, amen. All right, and I think you guys have Junior Church. Enjoy. their way pure, by guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Pastor Jason came to be with this congregation, the first thing I did was I made a phone call and I wanted to meet the man. And we arranged that, and we met in his office, and uh, he got to know me and I got to know him a little better. And uh, that visit took about two hours. Uh, we were chatting away. But the, the subject of the Gideons came up and I told him I was a member. And he jumped up and ran over to his bookcase and uh, grabbed the light book, which is a Gideon publication tailored for youth, teens primarily. And he says, with my background in youth ministry, I have used this book often. And I absolutely love it. I said, do you think the Gideons could come into this church? We have kind of a tradition of doing that once a year. He says, absolutely. Well, how do we go about doing that? He says, well, when I go on vacation, 
oh, hey, oftentimes I have to get a guest pastor. How about one of those times we'll just, each year, we'll just get a Gideon representative. Works for me. So we started planning, but COVID-19 had some other plans. So our date kept getting pushed out and pushed out, but finally the day has come and we're gonna have a Gideon speaker. And uh, most of you may know him, for those of you who don't, it's Brent Winsler, he and his wife Elaine live here in Archibald, Ohio, along with their son Bryce, and he is going to give the Gideon message this morning. Brent? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture about the handwriting on the wall. The testimony I'm going to share with you this morning is about the handwriting on the ceiling. As Christopher Yuan laid in his prison bunk one night, now what was Christopher doing in prison? Well, he had been busted for dealing drugs and Christopher was HIV positive. He looked up out of his bunk and read something scribbled on the ceiling. It said, if you're bored, read Jeremiah 29, 11. Christopher thinks, where am I going to find a Bible in prison? He crawls out of his bunk, goes to his locker, and guess what was in the locker? A Bible. But it had the covers torn off of it. Why? Because in the Gideon prison ministry, we have to tear the covers off the Bible so they cannot be used as a weapon. Now, the Bible that Christopher was looking at, perhaps you may have read that Bible sometime during your life in a motel or hotel room. Now, how do I know that? Because the motel and hotel Bibles have a second life. They are used in the Gideon prison ministry. So perhaps you read that Bible that Christopher Yohan found Jeremiah 29, 11 in. For the thoughts I know for you and still think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. At the most <coughs> hopeless point in Christopher's life, God used the words penned by a prophet thousands of years earlier to tell Christopher that regardless of who he was and what he had done in the past, God still had a plan for Christopher Yuan. My friends, the word of God has changed and continues to change the lives of millions. Even the life of a prisoner who is now teaching at the Moody Bible Institute. And there is a waiting list to get into Professor Christopher Yuan's class. Now, if you get bored with my remarks today, in your bulletin is an insert describing the Gideons. So instead of uh, my presentation, you certainly may read through the bulletin insert. You might ask, who are the Gideons? The Gideons International is an association of born-again Christian business and professional men. As diverse, courageous, and visionary men of God, we live and serve in over 200 countries worldwide by distributing printed scripture in over 101 different languages. Since 1899, our passion has been sharing the gospel with the world, realizing that God's word changes lives for an eternal destiny. The Gideons International consists of men and also wives and widows. We call the wives and widows auxiliary. Worldwide, you have representatives in excess of 250,000 members worldwide. Now, I kind of like when I hear big numbers like that to try and uh, come up with some idea. How many people is that? Well, you know what? If we went up to the big house in Ann Arbor, we would still not have enough seats for all the Gideons and Auxiliary worldwide. So let's go to Columbus, Ohio and go to Ohio Stadium. Well, we would still fill that stadium also and there still wouldn't be enough seats for the Gideons worldwide, 250,000 worldwide. 
Isaiah 55, 11 assures us that God's word does not return void. We are making a global impact on a local basis. Most people are aware that the Gideons put Bibles in motel rooms. However, we place Bibles in other designated traffic lanes of life, such as hospitals, convalescent homes. We still try and make distributions to schools if we can find a public sidewalk to stand on. Prisons and jails, police, fire and medical personnel, homeless shelters, and yes, hotels and motels, and even lawyers' offices. As members of local churches, Gideon's visit congregations, such as your congregation here, to let you know how God is using the seeds that you have sown into the Gideon ministry. We are an extension of this church, and we work in partnership with believers like you all around the world. Now, when a Gideon reaches into his suit coat pocket, he's going to pull out New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. The one that I pull out is burgundy in color. Now, when I reach in my other pocket, ladies, you're far more colorful than the men because the ladies distribute scripture also. Periwinkle, far more colorful. Now, <clears throat> what does it cost to produce this little book, New Testament Psalms and Proverbs, a dollar twenty-five, and the testaments that we distribute uh, across the world, we don't have to pay anyone to hand those out. The Gideons hand those out to people that want to have God's word. By God's grace, we placed and distributed over ninety-one million scriptures this last year. And since 1908, we've placed more than 2 billion, that's with a B, 2 billion scriptures around the world. God's timing is always perfect, and his hand is on every copy of his word. Now, I've got to tell this next testimony because I know, I planned that Dave Rupp would be here this morning. So this testimony is for Dave. This was received at International Headquarters, and when we receive these testimonies, it really fires us up to see that God's word gets distributed. Here's the letter. I was arrested at the Miami airport and taken to the local hospital to evacuate the drug I had carried from Columbia in my stomach. The year was 1998. I was charged with possession, drug trafficking, conspiracy, and money laundering. I was sentenced to 25 years for each charge for a total of 100 years in prison. I was taken to a detention center where a man gave me a New Testament from the Gideons International. He asked me if I would read it. From that moment, I realized God had a plan for me. I always thought that I was good. I believed that giving away food and gifts, even with drug trafficking money, made me a good person. In jail, however, I learned about the greatness of God and realized that my relationship with him matters more than money. Through that small book, I came to know a powerful God. As time passed, God allowed me to form a group of inmates for prayer and biblical studies, and with the help of a local church, I became the Christian leader of the Metro West Detention Center in the city of Miami. Through God's grace, the group increased in number. We prayed daily for those who had to go to court, and the men began to find freedom, both physical and and spiritual. After two years, I received an offer to reduce my stay to 80 years if I declared myself guilty. Another option was to go to a fast trial to see if I was declared guilty or innocent. I elected the fast trial, and three times in a row I was found not guilty. 
I was then declared a burden to the state of Florida. Under those circumstances, the state offered me 36 months, of which I had already paid 30 months. I watched God's hand reduce my penalty from 100 years to just three years in prison. I returned to Columbia, and God restored my home and my company. I began to look for a way to serve the Lord, but I was having difficulties. Last year, I was invited to know about the Gideons International and I found it to be the right place at the right time. This is the last paragraph of the letter. I flew to the United States with heroin in my stomach, but came back with Jesus Christ in my heart. I thank God I went to prison. May God continue to bless the Gideon ministry. It's testimonies like that that fire up Gideons worldwide. Now, I mentioned about the New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. And a lot of people think of the Gideons as men with glasses and gray hair. And I think I fit that bill. And I'm slightly overdressed today because I've got a tie on. But uh, it's okay because when I go to Gideon meetings, usually it's gray haired men with glasses wearing a tie. But why did I grab? Oh, we all have these, don't we? Cell phone? Why did I grab that? Because we have a new 21st century opportunity in the Gideon ministry. The Gideons International has a Bible app. And I would be most pleased to give each and every one of you a card today at the end of worship that tells you how to get the free Gideon Bible app. I've got cards with me today. Now, this Bible app costs you nothing to get. But what's unique about it, it has God's Word printed, where you can read it, but it also has God's Word in audio. Now, I struggle a lot of times to pronounce some of the Old Testament characters and their names. I don't have to struggle anymore. All I do is go to the Gideon Bible app and have the app tell me how to pronounce those names. And if I want to just listen to scripture, I certainly can. What's neat about the Gideon Bible app is the fact that the audio has God's word in 1,255 different languages and dialects. So we should be able to have people listen to God's word in whatever language or dialect they're accustomed to. Now the Gideons have struggled for years to physically get in the country of China. We want to get God's word in China. Do you think the Chinese might have cell phones? So here's our opportunity, even though physically we can't get into that country, that through that Gideon Bible app, we can get people to hear and read God's word without handing them physically a New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. Now, in the New Testament Psalms and Proverbs, in the back cover, we have GPS. Now, I think we all know about GPS on our cell phones. It tells us how to get to where we want to go. But you know, my cell phone can run out of energy. I have to uh, plug it in, recharge it, get it going again. The New Testament Psalms and Proverbs, GPS in the back, God's plan of salvation. And this doesn't have to be recharged. It's living. It's like the scripture we read this morning from Hebrews. And nothing pleases a Gideon and Auxiliary more than when we hand, we call these PWTs, Personal Workers Testaments. When we hand this to a person and the person opens the back, and decides to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and signs their name in the back. GPS, God's plan of salvation. I want to share also, I heard the reference to the Life Book. And the Life Book, for those of you who do not know, this little book here, it's the Book of John. And so here's another opportunity for Gideons to get involved 
in student distributions, but we can't get in the school, or we can't find a public sidewalk to see it on. This life book, Book of John, and it's written and illustrated in uh, terms that the youth would find attractive. So I commend Pastor Jason for using that life book. It costs nothing. The Gideons will supply this for nothing to whatever pastor would ask for the life book. Now, I want to share another testimony with you. And I met this man at an Ohio State meeting. And I've shared this testimony for years, but I want to share it again today. This man's name is kind of unusual. His name is Elliot Ozowit. And Elliot planned to kill himself. It was Christmas Eve, and his wife had just locked him out of the house. But who could blame his wife for locking him out of the house? Elliot had not been a good father or husband. For years, he had traveled the world, pursued his own success, and indulged in all kinds of immoral activities. He was away from home even as his wife struggled to raise two of their grandchildren and cope with breast cancer at the same time. So there was Elliot in a hotel room on Christmas Eve with a gun. But on the TV was an open Gideon Bible. That irritated Elliot. He knocked it onto the floor and tried to kick it under the bed. But it wouldn't go because the bed was solid all the way to the floor. And the Bible was still open. Elliot opened it up, or it was open. Elliot picked it up and he read John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Elliot spent three days in that hotel room reading the Bible. On Sunday, he attended church with his wife and gave his life to Christ. But that's not the end of the testimony. Elliot Oswald was called by God into ministry and now is a pastor in North Carolina. Now, when I walked in this morning, my heart was warmed because when I walked in just inside the front door, I saw a Gideon card display. And I know why it's stocked well, because of Skip. Skip keeps an eye on that. And what's in that? It costs you nothing to use these cards, nothing. And we have three cards in that display. The one that's most commonly used is in memory, then we have in recognition, and we have thinking of you. This is your opportunity to give a Bible at $5 each. And in this past fiscal year in Fulton County, the use of those cards resulted in over $25,000 of contributions to the Gideons International. And oh, by the way, the Gideon membership auxiliary pays annual dues. And how do they figure out what our dues are? Well, they figure out what's the overhead of the Gideons and they assess it to the membership. So when you contribute to the Gideons International, your dollars are used to print, produce, and ship scripture. The overhead of the Gideons International is paid by the membership. So I commend those cards to your use, and uh, we appreciate your past support of the Gideon cards and that opportunity to give Bibles at $5 each. Now occasionally, we have where we find out a person has went home to be with the Lord, but in their will, they remembered the Gideon ministry. And we just had this happen in Fulton County, where... The Gideons International was listed as a beneficiary of the person's will. And the amount of that gift. Now, we have no idea why this person put the Gideons International in their will. Maybe it was the result of a church presentation. 
Maybe it was the result of getting a Gideon card. We don't know. They weren't active in the Gideon ministry. The amount of the gift was in excess of $180,000. Just think how many of these little testaments at $1.25, $180,000 could generate. Now, I would like to thank you so much for allowing me to make this presentation this morning. I looked back, I was here more than three years ago, so I appreciate you offering me the opportunity to once again join you for worship. I talked to Pastor Jason last week before he left on vacation. He told me that I needed to stay under 20 minutes. And I told Skip this morning, if Windsor gets carried away, give him the sign. One last comment in conclusion. Thank you. Thank you for your past financial support, but yet your prayers for the Gideon ministry. We're in places worldwide that are filled with danger, but yet God's word continues to go forth. And we appreciate, we covet your prayers of the Gideon ministry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brent, for your message and the work that Gideon International does. And now as the ushers come forward, let's take some time to prepare our hearts and our minds for offering. And also put your, make sure you fill out your response card, and they can also put their RSVP in the <laughs> offering. That'd be wonderful. Let us pray. Holy God, architect of the universe, you have wonderfully made every delicate intricacy of this world. Then you placed human beings in the center of it as we stumble our way through living our lives in union with your will and in harmony with creation. As we offer our tithes and gifts this morning, we thank you for sending Jesus to show us the way in simple language, loving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. May our gifts be dedicated toward making both a reality. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <laughs>
say the prayer we've been saying this whole season. Jesus, as you said we would do greater things, we pray that we might be strengthened by your spirit to do something so big that if you're not on it, we fail. Amen. For a benediction this morning, I just wanted to share with you, I went to my son's book bag this morning, and out I pulled this New Testament. They do give them out in the public schools, and this goes with him everywhere that he goes. And, and I was looking in the front. It has his name in it, and it says here, the Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. And now let's join together for our benediction this morning. The words are on the screen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week.